Well, hello, good evening, and welcome, whichever camera everybody's in. Um, it's Wednesday night. It's the, it's the, it's the sixth of February, believe it or not. And um, tonight's a bit of a special night. Vapertrails.tv is exactly two years old tonight. It's the anniversary of our first ever broadcast, and in honour of that, we've brought together the original team, which are in no particular order, but I've put them boy, girl, boy, girl. Um, if we pop the first pair in, well, you can see them over my shoulders, but let's get them full screen. We have on your left, Andy Sutton. Say hello, Andy. Hello. And on your right, we have Cat Chris. Chris, Cat, Cat, Chris. Say hello, Chris. Hello. Now, hello. There's two of the original team. And then going back to the other pair, he said, sorting all these bits of keys and everything out, we have, on your left, Dave Kitson. Say hello, Dave. Hello, Dave. And on your right, the effervescent loveliness. <laughs> that is Sam Kirstein. Say hello, Sam. Hello. There you go. Um, that is the team. That is the team that we have for you tonight. Um which is all good and it's all brilliant and that's all going to be on V T Talk. <laughs> and we're back in the room and and as uh, as Andy and Dave and Kat and everybody said this is very very much like the very early days of uh, vaportrails.tv when everything was going here there and everywhere things have come on a little bit now and I'm, I'm probably going to get very very lost with buttons and uh, if you want to know why that's why that's everything that I'm looking at and there's a whole load of buttons down on this thing here that I need to press uh, in order to get it all working. So it's a bit of a little bit of a nightmare to get it all right. But we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, things have changed a little somewhat. Now let's let's go to the guy that was first on screen, the guy that did the first ever broadcast. Andy, it looked nothing like that for you, but you were used to things looking like that, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, the first one was very interesting. It was uh, it was a Skype call basically between. Mr. Kitts and yourself and, and myself, wasn't it? And uh, a, 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 me in the same place as I am now, but just with a black curtain behind me. Yes. And phrases like, is this thing on? Is yes. it working? Can you is hear it, me? If anybody's watching, hello, welcome to the first <laughs> episode of VaporTrust.tv. <laughs> yeah, it was very much fly by the seat of our pants. It pretty much was. It pretty much was. And the second show, of course... Uh, was headed up by Mr. Kitson of that ilk, who I... Am I right in thinking that we got it that way around, that you did the second show on the same night as Andy did the first one, Div? I really can't remember. No, you've got it wrong. Uh, that very first night, uh, Andy went out first, and then you went out following. And we were all on both shows, except Kat, who was only on yours. Right. Right, because I, uh, I, I can't remember what it was. The original idea was I was going to follow Andy, but something broke, went wrong. So uh, I was actually the last one of the original presenters to put a show out. I see. Mm. It's, but, it's... Uh, I, I, I was watching earlier. That's how I remember this. It's not some memory trick. I, uh, I, I had a look <laughs> in the archives. <laughs> uh, and Andy uh, sort of uh, did his integrity thing, if you remember, Andy. Yes, yes. And we had a look at the fog. Do you remember that? <laughs> I remember the fog. I don't think it's been out of the box since. And uh, and your show, Dave, you were looking at the Provari. Would you believe? Yes, I yeah, uh, I, I well remember the Provari thing running through how many different voltages i think i did every last voltage that it had um one by one and ended up 
as I recall, by the end of that little lot, which thank God it was filmed because I, I had such a nick headache doing it all, just sucking it in and out and in. And this one's a 3.1 volt. you would have thought you'd got 20 minutes just out of the Pravari display. Yes. I mean, <laughs> that was cunning. <laughs> Those were the days. Those were the days. But, right, okay, let's let's fire one to Chris. Now, and, and the reason I'm going to go to Chris on this is because I think I'm probably right in saying, and, and I, I need to phrase this absolutely right, but if I remember correctly, Chris is the most experienced of us with e-cigs. You started first, didn't you, Chris? I did, yes. Um, four years on March the 16th. Yes. And that was Sav and I both. That was the day we started with e-cigs. And what was it? What was it you started with? A nine o one, a pink one. So things haven't changed a lot, have they? Really? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> not not going by last Thursday night show. No, no. <laughs> there was a lot of pink on that show last week, without any shadow of a doubt. But you, you. Absolutely. That March the wenth, the, the the sixth. Did you say or the sixteenth? Sixteenth. March the sixteenth. So that's yep. four years ago. Come then. So, yep. in, in actual fact, you you and Sav are probably, you're right in the very first cohort. You probably the, the, the long, or in that bunch of the longest experienced. I mean, there couldn't have been very many before you. There weren't, um, although we have the people like Apostle, you know, they, they were sort of 2008. Um, Toby from iVapor, and there was quite a few of the Americans uh, that we don't really see much of these days. But there certainly weren't as many as there are now, that's for sure. No, absolutely not. And Sav, of course, uh, 901, a pink one for you as well? Yes, bright pink. Had to be something a little bit different. <laughs> the the, the oh, same God, pink or a slightly different pink? It had to be done. Um, I've got to say, my audio is breaking up a little bit, and I do apologise for that. It's not easy to hear at the minute, but I'll, I'll sort that out during the adverts. I think I know what it is. Um, where was I going to go? So, you you two ladies, it seems really wrong saying that the ladies are the most experienced. And if I keep wanting to say the word the oldest vapors, you know, and, and, and I know that that is just wrong, and I can't get that right. There's no way I can get it right. But the more, uh, if the more when you've hit the bottom, stop digging. <laughs> the most experienced of us, the two most experienced vapors amongst us. Um, and I'm going to throw this to everybody. Um, given what you started with, what of those very first devices that you had would you still use? And let's go to, let's go to Dave Kitson first on this one. Ooh. What was the question uh, of what I started with? What would I still use? Uh, okay. Well, my very first mod was my icon, and I still use that. And my, oh no, that's not true. My first mod was a, a screwdriver, and I don't use that much anymore. Uh, but the icon I do, and the silver bullet I do. In fact, I took that to uh, the vape meet at the weekend, my silver bullet. Um, but I suppose as well, like, uh, okay, I, I was using egos. I actually really sort of uh, got an ego a couple of weeks after I started. I still use those. Uh, the, I suppose the only thing that's different from, from what the girls have said there is uh, I've been 5'10 pretty much throughout. Yeah. Yes, five. Well, the 5'10 has kind of become ubiquitous, and I think it's probably what everybody knows. Let's throw it to, to Chris, um, Kat, mm -hmm. what, what you used out of that the first kind of tranche of things, let's say the first three months that you were at, what would you still use these days? What would you find useful? Um, well, there were two things. I mean, I'm not going to discredit the 901 at all. That was um, a really good piece of kit, I must admit. And the, the fabulous thing about it was that it came with carts that had four different flavors in so you had tobacco you had strawberry you had apple and menthol i believe mm -hmm. and that gave me as a vapor the opportunity to try things that i would never have tried 
because a cigarette smoker isn't going to take too kindly to something with a strawberry flavour. But when you have them there, you give it a go. And um, that was how I got on Apple. And to this day, four years later, that's still my favourite. I was, I was going to say, which, you are the Apple queen, aren't you? Absolutely. And But which would I keep? Now, the 510 came along afterwards, very closely afterwards for us. Um, it was a long time later before it really hit the big time in the States. But for us, it was at that point. And that was a good e-cig. But I have to admit, um, the GG, because I, I then got the Janty stick, which mm -hmm. was nice. But as most people would agree, the batteries didn't last forever. And it was at that point I got my first mechanical mod. Which, and that's which... still with me, except the cat has knocked all the bits on the floor. So I've got <laughs> half a GG here. Um, <laughs> which, which of the GGs was it? Well, I don't know, but there's bits of it all over the place. <laughs> this is what happens when you take things apart to clean them. Um, but, yeah, that's still the bit of kit that I'm still using. And unlike Mr Sutton there, I didn't have button bother. <laughs> still having button, button bother to this day. What, with, the, with the same device? Yeah, no, I, I have, I've, I've let the GG sort of lay for a bit. I haven't used, picked, probably picked it up in about six months, actually. I'm ashamed to say, and I think it's got a bit of corrosion on the, uh, the, the screw fitting bits. And uh, I posted a thing on the forum saying, you know, it's misfiring. And uh, I think it was Cliffy pointed out that I needed to make sure that everything that screws in together needs to be absolutely clean. <laughs> and when I took it apart. It was certainly not that. Yes, I'll be honest and say that I do have uh, one piece of GG kit that, that does appear to have, I think there's a proper word for it, but it, yes, it's got that gun, John, and it's not very, uh, yes. not very clean at all. Yeah, it but, was um, almost a, a sort of another life form I'd, I'd created. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way of putting it. There's so many wisecracks I can make to that one, but I'm not going to. <laughs> yes. So what about what about Sav then? Um, what have what have you decided based on what you've heard there? What what the, from what you started with? What would you still use? What would you go back to if you had to? That's dead easy for me. Um, eight or one atomizers. I love eight or one atomizers. And I still do to this day. They're not easy to get, but when I can get them, I love them. And would happily use an 801 all day, every day. And that was from the Janty Stick. Now, did you, did you, you never found the 801s particularly airy then, did you not? Because I, I must admit, I always thought they were a bit of a kind of, you could lung inhale on them very easily. And that's... They were very airy, yeah. But, yeah. oh, the amount of vapour you got out of them compared to a 901, it was just huge. Loved it. Still do. Yes. Um, I'm and and flavour was great. Yeah, I, 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 I like the 801 just purely and simply for the amount of juice that it held in comparison. Because my, my first one was a, from New Sig and it was a, a 084. Tiny little wee thing, just 84 millimetres long. And it had been lucky if it was 8 millimetres wide. You could slide it into a 901. Um, and I think the little, the little juice tank was kind of, it would have been a thimble for an elf. And if you, <laughs> that's, that's what, it, it was tiny. It held about, I think, five or six drops of juice, which for anybody dripping these days is probably a drag or two drags at the outside, especially on the, on the new rebuildables. Um, and that, that, was, that was where I got to start. And I, to be, I've got to be honest and say, I didn't really think a great day of it. Um, it was all right, it proved the concept, but I ended up on the first day it arrived buying another five or 10 batteries, I can't remember which, and a hundred of these cartridges because nobody told me that you could buy bottled juice. So I was kind of well behind the curve. And then a little while later, um, I'd gone to ECF, none of the other forums existed, there was only ECF, and he was the word, you can buy bottled juice and a place called Liberty Flights does it. And I, oh, so I went to Liberty Flights and I got this bottle of RY4 
Yeah. Does that ring any bells with you, Mr. Kitson? Pretty much, yeah. I mean, it's funny. Um, I said I'd, I've used five tens throughout. Of course, the first thing uh, that I bought was an Elites kit, uh, which I didn't know until some, some time afterwards. It was actually a three oh six, so it's basically a five ten thread, yes. um, and shared most of the uh, the positive aspects of the five ten. So, um, but yeah, I did exactly what you did. Bought a load of boxes of these little cartridges. I should stress that if you go and get an E-Lights kit today, you won't get a 306. You'll get a vastly inferior atomizer. Um, but uh, I did I did exactly that, really. I can remember being sat in a hotel room. I was on an overnight business trip uh, in Warrington, I believe. Um, and this battery, this E-Lights battery, was really annoying me. And I remember being online and joining UK Vapors and ordering a Reva kit there and then, <laughs> mm. uh, and juice. Uh, and I think the first bottle of juice I bought was, what was it? It was it was also from Liberty Flights, actually. And it was some Marlboro-type thing. U USA Mix, I think it was called. Yes, yes, that rings a bell. Because um, I, I, the, the, the reason I got this juice, actually, was because I was going to go away on holiday, and it was the whole idea of taking what was going to amount to a carton of these cartridges that big because they, they came in uh, a box about that size and there was five of them, five, either five or ten in there. But seriously, I was getting through three boxes a day and they were £10 a box. Yeah, <laughs> they yeah, kept on yeah. saying it would be cheaper. <laughs> and it just wasn't, wasn't working out that way at all. That, that's exactly what was happening with me because obviously they claim, and I think they still claim today, that one of these cartridges is worth 20 cigarettes or something. But I, um, I was actually driving up to Warrington most mornings. Every now and then I'd stay over. But I, I was basically commuting. And what was happening was I was putting on uh, one of these cartridges it's about an hour and a half's drive for me. And I'd be on the second battery before I got there. Mm. Uh, um, and the cartridge would be ready to replace after an hour and a half. Yes. That... Um, and I, 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 it was about a week of that. And I thought, mm, something's, something doesn't stack up here. And that's when I started looking for something better. Mm. It, 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 it's, uh, it's very familiar. I mean, at one point I had a... Um, a strip of eight 13 amp sockets each of which had 13 amp plug in each of which had a charger in and they're all sitting there with all different colors i had red ones and green ones and blue ones and they're all sitting there charging up and you kind of you sit you pick one up you put the end on you have a few drags battery's gone cartridge is empty right so you screw that one back on to charge and then get the thing out and start fiddling about for the next it was god i'm so pleased those days are gone but of course um Andy Sutton, you you are you the no you're not the baby of the group, are you? No, I started in December two thousand and nine. Right. So after after Chris and Sav and myself, but slightly before you, Dave. Yes, I was uh, September two thousand and ten. Right. So what what did you start with, Andy? I I, I did the normal thing. Um, well, I, I've told this story a couple of times, but I'll tell it again really quickly. Um, I, I, my mum was coming over for Christmas, and uh, I didn't like to smoke around her. Uh, so, you know, around my mum, I was sort of a secret smoker, I know, silly to say, but I was. Uh, and I ordered a, a very small lookalikey. I can't even remember the make. Uh, it arrived. I was massively disappointed with it. And I, I, I went straight onto YouTube and had a search around. And I think one of the first videos I actually watched was yours, Cat. It was the of the, the Janty Sticks. I ordered one of those. And um, then uh, I watched one of Grim Green's video, and I ordered a screwdriver as well. So I had the 801 and the 901. And, uh, yeah, that's how I started. But I remember that, you know, those cartridges, I, 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 mine came with juice. One of the first juices I got was RY4. And uh, from iVapor, I think. And um, I remember the day that someone said you can put that flu valve stuff, the, the, the filler material, in a cartridge. And I remember the, I was sitting watching a film and I remember getting through the whole, nearly the, the whole way through the film 
on two refills of a cartridge and it was like a breakthrough do you know what i mean it was it was incredible that this flu valve stuff that i had cut out into little tiny sort of sugar cubes and jammed in there had seen me about what must have been about 45 minutes nowadays you know i'm disappointed if i have to refill at the end of a day Dave, yes, if you flick the camera to me has changed oh yes dave's got dave's got some on camera uh where are we <laughs> There you go. That's the, that's the stuff. No, you, you've still got some, Dave. Mostly <laughs> just in case. bag of blue foam. <laughs> I never throw anything away. That's why my office is a mess. <laughs> I tell you what, I didn't expect to see any blue fluval on the show today. I'd completely forgotten about that kind of stuff. And there was Mine's the, all in the fish tank now. Is it? And there was yeah. the, there was all that... Um, oh, what was it? The... the uh, the pen, it was like a pen insert or a straw insert. The Chris, straw didn't you mod. try that? Straw mod, yeah. Oh, I loved yeah. the straw mod. Uh, I found the, Best way to get the juice out of an 801 cart because it all got stuck know? at the end. And you cut them Brilliant. at an angle loved it. and you stuck them <laughs> in. Now, the only trouble was if you did that with a 901, it meant you only got 11 drops in instead of 12. <laughs> and if it was in an 801, you still got 20. So, you know, that was really cool if you could get 20 drops. <laughs> well, that, I think that's probably why Sav liked the 801 as much. Were you getting 20 drops in with the straw mod, Sav? Oh, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> it was brilliant. Best thing ever. It's, uh, it's actually quite amazing when you think about it that uh, between us all, I think we've all started in with different things you've got pink 901s for for sav and chris you've got e lights for dave we've got i can't remember what it was called from andy the, uh, but a lucky lady and a, and a, a new sig lucky lady for me and i think we've we have all moved on rather substantially and after the break i'm going to pose the question what's your favorite what's lasted longest in your hand since the time you got started. There's something for everybody to be ponder. We'll be back in two minutes and I'm gonna try and sort sound out. There you are, just like nothing happened, he said. What Having happened? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Not a damn thing. <laughs> oh, Lord. Everything's, everything, it, it's, there are so many buttons and it's so complicated trying to set this stuff up. But never mind, we're there now and it works, which is all good. Um, and I can now hear Dave and Sav and I think uh, Captain, Captain Andy can hear Dave and Sav. Can you all? Yes? Yes. What? Yes, thank you. I so. hope so. That's lovely, I can hear everybody. Great. <laughs> yeah. We can have a decent conversation. Right, I said, right at the very, at the, just before we went into the adverts there, um, what would your favourite device be 
over the time from when you started until now. It, so it's, it probably links in with what the most significant piece of hardware, whether it's a battery and, a, and an atomizer or whatever, what would be over that period of time, if it's gone, that you miss most, um, or you know the one that you just keep on going back to and picking up time after time. And I think, let's start with Sav on this one, because I have a sneaking feeling and I know where this is gonna go. It's actually two things, but they're permanently connected, <laughs> and that would be Darwin. <laughs> I can't live without either. You, you, it's never out of my hand. It never is, is it? You've been seen everywhere on national television worldwide. And not, gooseneck. Not you as well, Mr Sutton. <laughs> I've got a gooseneck somewhere. No, no, no. Everyone I was just saying that um, Sam mm. has been seen on, on not only with a Darwin, but, but with a gooseneck on a Darwin. Well, yes. There's, oh, there's... Fogatti would look good on a gooseneck. Yeah. <laughs> have to be a strong gooseneck. They're not that heavy. They're pretty tough. And the goosenecks are pretty tough, aren't they? Yeah. They are. So, right, Sav, Darwin, gooseneck, and what about on top? What's been your favourite device of all of them? Um, again, I love the eight ones, but I have to say I'm very taken with what I've got on there at the minute, which is the spheroid. Um which I absolutely love. I never thought I would, and I can rebuild it myself. Wow. Which is always good. But, yeah, I think that has to be my favourite. Right. Now, I'm going to come to Chris next to Kat, because I think, of all of us, Kat's probably tried more toys than any of us. And yours would be? Has to be. It's a GG. It has to be the GG, because I've used that the most over the years. So I have to say that um, because of the easy maintenance and the fact it's like Lego, you can take it apart and put it back together in so many different ways. Yes. Um, as, as you well know, I'm quite good at that. <laughs> oh, yes. I've seen, I've seen GGs in some formats that I never thought I'd see GGs in. And, the, and the, the brilliant part about it was they were always working, apart from once when, I, as I recall, we got a Skype call... Um, and it was was cut on the other end, and what I got was, what are you doing? Not a lot. Why? Can you come up? Well, I can't. Why? Me bloody GG. <laughs> it just won't work. You remember that day? I think we had. It was a Tuesday. It was a Tuesday, uh, and we ended up. Um, I, I, I start. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was, I was fiddling on with it while while you were doing the show. And I, I tried to. I tried to, yes. I think that one might have been filled with exudations of an anal quality, but we're not going yeah. further down that road. Um, but yes, that was, that, was, that was an interesting one, that one. But yeah, I mean, you've always been... Uh, I, I don't remember a time when you haven't had a JJ to hand. And, and as, as There's I, always one around. And, and as you, my recollection always is, whenever you get fed up with anything, doesn't matter what it is, the JJ comes out. Yes. But of all the devices that you would put on top, which would you not be without now? I reckon the line. I, it's a line, yes. That's and unfortunately my line has a little disaster. Oh dear. You can see the bottom there is a problem. It's all skew with. Yes. Because I knocked it on the floor on a device. And to make sure I still had a line, um, because they're not available and you don't get many come up on the, the classes. I bought two of these Verti things. All right, yes. Which, on first impression, vape very nicely, but they do leak. Um, and I took this one off here before and a washer came off with it, so I'm not very impressed at the moment. So, Foggy, I hope you... You know, you're, you're keeping better and that you get back to doing some repairs soon. Ah, uh, yes, because uh, Foggy's the repairmeister, is he not? <laughs> yes. He is. So well, let's, let's go to Mr. Kitson next. And uh, same question to you, Dave. Of all the devices that you've had over it, oh, I can see what he's got in his hand. There you <laughs> go. I found the goosenick. <laughs> I, think, I think the Fogatti looks great. <laughs> Goose neck, goose neck. Fogatti on his goose neck. 
<laughs> Look at this. I've seen everything now. Right, so my favourite device is basically the question, isn't it? Yeah, favourite device is whether it be well the battery holder or device and and, uh, and atomizer, the, the two that you would want to keep together. Yeah, okay. Um, I think probably, uh, based on the fact that I look around my desk and I see what I'm using, it's got to be one of the Genesis atomizers. And I think I'd have to go for the Fugatti. Um, it's... Um, I know I've had it not long relative to the other stuff, but I, I think generally speaking, the new innovations that have come out have been an improvement. Mm. Uh, so that, you know, I still, every now and then, I'll use a 510 atomizer. <coughs> and let's face it, it doesn't really matter what mod you use it on. If you put a fresh battery on, I'll use a 510 atomizer if, I, if I'm tasting juice or even a 901. Um, so, but generally speaking, newer stuff has been better than the stuff that it replaces. Um, and the Fugatti is what I use more than anything else at the moment. Right, yes. I, I, I use Carto tanks uh, for convenience. Um, but hardware-wise, the Fugatti. And what about the battery holder, Dave? Sorry? The battery holder. The, the device in your hand. The device, that, that's a silver bullet. Yeah. What yeah. would you what would your favourite one be over the over the period of time? That's really really hard question to answer because I actually don't think that um, I th I, th I think if they work and they're reliable and they prove themselves over a period of time, then you are really down to uh, minute details to separate them. I mean, the silver bullet is the one is that's the oldest mod that I use regularly uh, but I also still use the icon yes. yeah, it would be very hard for me to choose to be honest Dave, yeah. I still use egos as well it, 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 absolutely, I mean you know um, I think I'm probably in the same camp as you, the, the, there's so many devices to choose from and like Chris I still keep going back to the GG um, you see I don't use my GG too much anymore uh, but there, there is actually a very good and very simple reason for it. I mean, at the moment, it's got an 801 cartomizer on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, for the simple reason that um, there isn't much that you can fit onto a native GG. Not of modern stuff. You can't use it with a carto tank. I can't use it with a rebuildable unless you get hold of uh, adapters that are just not easy to get hold of. Um, so I've had the feelers out for a stealth cap or something for, for this for, woof, since, since the stealth cap appeared. What's that? It's got to be a year. And I haven't had any luck. Right. Well, so, you're not, uh, so you're not... actually the GG is pretty useless to me unless I want to use it with uh, the UFS. Well, you know, we were talking earlier on about the spring for the screwdriver thing for my Leatherman. Yes. I have a stealth cap. I'll do you a swap. Okay, that sounds like a good deal to I me. I think that's a deal. You <laughs> fix my leather. I'm sure I would then use the GGTS a lot more. Well, there you go. But yeah, I mean, I was I was kind of saying, um, I still go back to the GG because there's something, there's just something about the little finger pumping up and down on that switch that, that still mm -hmm. attracts. And as Chris says, um, well, you, you can bring nails in with them, can't you? And they, they tend not to, you know, you do what you like with these things and they, they tend not to fall to bits. The steel ones, certainly. Um, but at the moment, I'm, I'm backwards and forwards between the uh, the Segeli Z Max and the Evic, and the Evic purely and simply because I am a total geek, um, and I just love the idea that you can clart about and I was going to say something wrong there, and I shouldn't have done. But tomorrow, I'll, I'll expound a bit on it tomorrow. I will. I'll expound a bit on it tomorrow. Um, and so to the last member of the team. Andy Sutton, over the period of time, what's your favourites? And I know you've been experimenting a lot lately, haven't you? Yes, yeah, with rebuildables and stuff. But I'm going to go back to the device that I I use the most, and, and I've got to agree with Mr. Kit, Kitson. It's the the silver bullet. It, it's broken now, and I, I, I miss it. So that's why I'm probably choosing it. Uh, but I've now got a bolt, which is sort of filling the gap. But... If, so it's, just a it's point the there, Andy, I'm sorry to interrupt, but if mm. only we knew a mod maker who has proved himself adept at fixing silver bullets. If only. If only. 
Do, do, do we know one? No. Yes. <laughs> Who would that be, Dave? He did the switch on mine. It's gold. Oh, yeah. Did Chris, did Chris, don't I recall you got a gold switch as well? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. And, and a very, very shiny, beautifully shiny. Is it still in the um, the sock? Not the sock. What do you call it? The pochette? It's still in that bag. Hang on. <laughs> you want to see? I'm sure Sav would love to see it. <laughs> da, 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 da. Da da, da 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 da! Oh, talk about coddling! Look at the state of Don't this. Suck. <laughs> Look at that! Oh, has that nice. has that ever been used, Chris? I can it. I can it. Bring me cell to do it. Can I just quickly put Sav's face on screen? <laughs> 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 she was she was just just sitting there off screen. I didn't put her on. She was just sitting there going. <laughs> she was shaking her head with this resigned look on her face. Would you care to share why, Sav? I miss my silver bullet. <laughs> Me too. What what happened to your silver bullet? You've just seen it. <laughs> Oh, it got stolen. I see. Oh, I'm staying out of that one. I borrowed. I need a little stir. I'll say no more. No, borrowed. Absolutely borrowed. Sorry, Andy, we interrupted you. Something chronic. Where were you with your silver bullet? Well, I, I wholeheartedly agree. It's a great mod. And, and uh, the 18650 battery obviously goes in it. So that's my battery of choice. Um, the, the one that I hold dearest, really. You know, uh, it's when it it converted vaping from a sort of thing that had had things in the way of it being perfect. It's when I sort of reached the the this is it, you know, moment. And on top, I would say cartomizers in general. Really, I remember when when Toby showed me the first five ten fitted cartomizer. I thought. Like, ah! Fantastic, and I, you know, and Carto tanks, you know, it, it, I, if something lets me down, I always go back to a Cartomizer and a an eighteen six fifty. It's funny, isn't it? Because going back um, to two thousand nine, certainly. Mm. I mean, Chris, Chris will remember this. There were there were Cartomizers, the early Cartomizers, and they were shocking, weren't they? People just wouldn't have a bar of them. They came. What was it that they were on? The 808 D was it? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and can you remember that everybody was saying so? Oh, these are terrible things. You don't want to get them. And th but when was it that that, that cartomizers suddenly became good and nice? When they when they went low resistance for me. Yeah. Well said. They were just and uh, when uh, bones and, and started coil making them as well, made, rather made than them being a kind of amazing. tank. Y yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Dave. You were saying that, say that again. I just, I just think, I, I mean, I would agree with what Andy said. When they went low resistance, that's when they started being actually a nice vape. Um, but the big uh, factor for me was when the Bogue cartomizers first appeared and they used yeah. the wadding. Because before that, you had these like plastic tank things that you filled. Remember the uh, fartos? Yeah. The oh. Fat cartos and things like that. God, but yes. It, the, the Bogue cartos, they were great because cheap as chips. Worked really yeah. well, and they're still viable now. Even if the people generally use them in tanks and things. Oh, so, I'm, I mean, absolutely. They, they hit a winning formula there, didn't they? Because that's a long time in the world of vaping. Oh God, it must be. What is it? Two years? Two and a half years? Yes. Yeah. Well, I've been vaping two and a quarter years or something, and they've been around longer than me. So. Yeah. Do you know? I haven't thought about that. The, 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 as I say, when when I got to start. Uh, they came out with the 808 cartomizer things, and I remember getting one to try, and it was it was dire. Uh, I, I was getting very little out of it, and dry hits, and, and God knows what, and it was shocking. And yes, bottom coil though. Very good. Yeah, I, th I think to a large degree they, they, they've changed the insides of them to make them better. And it, 
yeah, basically. They, they, they've changed the insides to make them better. Because I will remember, uh, I was talking to um, a guy in SLB, Silabo, Sil and uh, he was saying that the only difference between the, the 808 ones and the 510 ones and the 901 ones was the fitting. That was it. Everything else yeah. on the inside was the same. And yet there were so many people saying, oh, the 510 ones are definitely nicer than the 808s, or the 808s are nicer than the 901s, and so on and so forth. It's all, it's all clever stuff, isn't it? All clever stuff. Um, they were 306 uh, cartomizers as well. They were just, uh, they, they, everybody saw a, you know, a, a gap in the market and they said, oh, we can do a version of that that, that fits anything. Well, the 510s become ubiquitous, hasn't it? I mean, yeah. Yeah. Ev everything. Dave, can I interrupt to say they're having problems with Dave's sound? Um, and it's time for a break, perhaps. Right. Okie dokie, I shall go to a break and we'll, uh, and we'll do our best to get sound issues sorted out. And we are back in the room, uh, as ever was, and hopefully we've managed to get the same problems sorted out. It's terminate. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Bad man. Bad man. I can't see where I'm looking <laughs> now. This is ridiculous. It's all going crackers. So I, yes, um, where had we gotten to? Talking about the various different, uh, various different devices. Let's go right up, bang up the date right now, this very minute. What are you using most? And let's start with Andy Sutton. At the moment, I am using um, a, a, a bolt with a Carto tank and a kick. Right. And how are you getting on with that? It's lovely. Lush. Chris, what are you yeah. using? What's in your hand? MVP with a spheroid on the top. Another spheroid user. Coolio. Mm. Coolio. So let's let's go to uh, Dave Kitson and see what his preferred weapon of choice is for today. Right now, it's the Orion two point one. Yes, I've I've seen you using that quite a lot. I know you're quite fond of that. I'm one. using it a lot lately. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Sav, I'm, I'm gonna I was gonna try and predict, but I don't know. It could be a Darwin. It could be an MVP. But I'm not sure what's on top. <laughs> Darwin spheroid. And that's that's the favourite at the minute, and yep. uh, yeah, and if if uh, at the moment I'm I'm torn between two lovers, feeling like foot no, um, I, I'm messing about with rebuildables at the minute. I've got the uh, the borrowed device, the Hellfire, which I know's got to come back, and and I will bring it back. Um, but yes, you've done me now. That's it. I'm going to be on every waiting list there possibly is for one of these <laughs> things. It's gorgeous. Uh, and the Cobra and uh, the Fogatti are the three that I'm playing with most. And uh, like Chris, the, um, the Verti, although it was a nice introduction, it's just basically not doing the job now. Um, 
and I've put a new coil and everything in it, so that's gone the way of old flesh. Um, the next thing I've written down here to kind of talk about is what, what you would consider each of you to be the most significant change that's come about over the last two years. The thing that you think has really changed the market most. And seeing as how I've got the shot up, we'll start with Sav. What do you think is the most significant change over the last two years? Um, it was mentioned earlier, and I have to say it was probably when low resistance came about. It changed everything. It was just totally different game after that. Um, much better. Yeah. Much more opportunity. So that's that's right over the whole spectrum. Cartos, yeah. everything, low resistance. Uh -huh. Dave, I see you were nodding. Yeah, I, I think that's a really good choice. I'd have probably had that one myself. But in the interest of uh, being diverse, <laughs> uh, I'm going to say 45 milligram juice for the simple reason that uh, um, I I tried 36 milligram juice. And I know you were a big fan of that for quite a long time, Dave. Yeah, yeah. And I found that if I vape that stuff, it gave me a headache. Um, so I was kind of cajoled into trying this 45 milligram stuff. And that, would you believe, almost a year ago now. Mm -hmm. And I found that it totally changes your vaping. Uh, oh, no, not, not the habit, but it changes the, the entire uh, approach to vaping using that stuff. You literally vape half as much. And, and given the way I spent the last sort of year... Uh, it was just, it was an absolute lifesaver for me. Uh, I didn't need to have something in my hand continually vaping. Uh, so, so, I mean, it really has had a big impact on me. I mean, I'm not using that now because I'm sitting at home in an environment where I can play with Genesis atomizers and all the rest of it. Mm. But uh, I'll be going to job interviews, hopefully, in the near future. And that's what I'll have in my pocket is uh, something like a little ellipse or an ego um, with 45 milligram juice. Indeedly doodly. Well, let's 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 move it right along and uh, going in the in the order that we've got them. Andy Sutton, what do you think's been the most significant change over the last two years? Well, I would agree with uh, everybody that's spoken so far, but um, I've got to say, variable voltage has um, changed the way I personally vape because you can suit your need for that moment. Or wattage, you know, if you're using a, a kick or a Darwin or, or one of those. But being able to change, I mean, remember the days of having to charge up two batteries to get six volts. I got into six volt vaping on the silver bullet and I thought, you know, uh, 36 milligrams on, on six volts blew my mind, literally. And now it's just a case of pressing one button up a bit or down a bit and you're there. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I well remember the video where you looked at six <laughs> volts in the, in the silver bullet. And yes, it did blow your mind. I remember it well. I would, yes. I would exhort people to look it up on your channel and check it out. Chris, what about you? What, what, what do you think has been the game changer, the most significant? Rebuildables, without a doubt. For me, um, they've brought so much excitement to the, to the whole vaping thing. Uh, they're just amazing. The, you know, they cater for carrying juice. They cater for um, those among us that, when they're stressed, like to sit and fiddle and make things. And it's just all down to yourself. And that's what I absolutely love, these things. So there you go. We're all different. <laughs> well, yeah, we are. We're, we're all very different. And, and that, I think, reflects the differences that, that there are throughout the whole of the, the community of, uh, of ECG users, not just in the UK, but worldwide. I mean, I think for me, the, uh, the combination of power control and variable voltage, um, it, it, it kind of, when you think about it, it builds on from the, the low resistance devices coming out. So that what Sav was saying about the low resistance atomizers and cartomizers, that kind of gave you the ability to vary the wattage at the atomizer, but you had to work out which bit went with what if you're using 5 volts or 6 volts or 3.7 volts and which one to use where. Um, when they brought in the variable voltage, then suddenly it, it kind of didn't matter if you, if you ordered a 2.6 and you got a 3.2 or if you ordered a 1.8 and you got a 1.5, you could 
vary the voltage to suit and that was all good and then when they brought the uh, the power control in um, with the Darwin which as we know is, is Sav's weapon of choice it's whipped about everywhere there um, suddenly you could say well actually I like it at 8 watts well what do you like it at Sav? Oh, 8.5. There you go. So eight, you set it at 8.5 watts and everything you put on it does the same, doesn't it? Yeah, it's beautiful. So, you Every know, time. from that, 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 that kind of changed the game. And certainly, rebuildables, um, as, as Kat said, I, <laughs> I've been fiddling about with these things. Winding coils, trying all these different wicking techniques. And every so often, Kat will Skype us up and go, have you tried it in a candle? <laughs> <laughs> okay so, or, or I'll try it without just just don't or or just do it once or roll it twice or put this down and, and there's all these different pulse, pulse wet yes <laughs> pulse, pulse wet exactly <laughs> sorry mm. yes calm calm um, yeah all of these different things and but at the end of the day you kind of go to measure the uh what on earth is that? Somebody flushed the loo. <laughs> Dave's making a wick. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Dave. Hello. I lost sound. I'm sorry. <laughs> we didn't. <laughs> I'm sorry. This wick was annoying. <laughs> You do you do you do know you've got the world's loudest blowtorch, don't you? It's only a little one. I know, but it's bloody loud. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I couldn't hear anything for a minute. I thought you'd gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, well, as I said, yes. The, the winding wicks and coils and stuff like that. You can guarantee you're never going to get the same uh, resistance twice. Um, not not unless you're one of the really clever ones, um, and the, and the variable wattage power control sorts all of that out. So it brings all of them together, and then with Dave and I, it's it, I blame Mr. Kitson for getting me onto the 45 milligram. Um, I'd listened to what he was saying and what he was using, and went and tried the exact same setup and blow me down. He's right. Um, if you're in a situation where you need to not be you know, just constantly sitting sucking on it. It's uh, it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. We've got about seven minutes left, if that. So I'm going to ask the question that I got asked last night, and we'll start with Mr. Kitson. And the sure. question is, where you, do you... you carry, we're re-wicking this Orion while we're talking, do you? You, you carry on doing that. Where <laughs> I'm knack of the coil as well, so... <laughs> Fair enough. Where do you see vaping in 10 years' time? Simple question. Oh, now there's a question for you. I hope, uh, and I, I sincerely hope, uh, that we'll carry on developing the technology um, in the way that it's happened over the last two years. And we've just had some cracking examples there. Because two years ago, variable voltage was just an idea. Genesis atomizers, okay, they were around, but they were, you know, they were unobtainable. Um, they uh, the good they still were are. something that people really wished that Rady mm. would say, uh, would share, mm. <laughs> if you remember. Um, uh, so, so I mean, if we carry on at that rate in ten years, who knows what 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 the technology will be like? But obviously, I suppose the first thing that we've got to hope for is that we're still free to do it. Yes, that's the most important part, of course. The most important part, Sav. I have to agree with everything Dave's just said um, and I'd love to see people all day every day walking down the street using a variety of different e-cigs. It would be brilliant. I'd love to see that. Wouldn't it just? And let's throw it over mm. to uh, Mr Sutton. Well again I agree. Um, mainstream, available to all and with the freedom to choose how to do it. Absolutely. And as as the most experienced member who's seen the most changes from the day she started, Chris, what do you mm. think? Ten years' time, where do you think it'll be? Well, I, I 
obviously I'm going to agree with everybody else what they've already said. Those are the things I would like to see. And I'd also like to be able to see China produce a decent, reliable e-cig. Do you think it could happen in 10 years? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Good uh, do you know, that's... that's <laughs> that, that's actually a good point. Um, I wouldn't, you know, there's been a, a thread on uh, on the vape pit about copies and, and so on and so forth. And in the world of guitars, and I know Dave will be able to uh, back me up a bit on this one, we are very, very used to seeing Stratocaster copies and Telecaster copies and Gibson copies and various other different copies. There's loads of them about. And it's, it's kind of accepted these days, in this day and age, that, you know, they, they, they say inspired by and they change one or two dimensions so it's not a direct copy. But it has to be said that all of the, the copy e-cigs or the very, very tightly inspired by e-cigs that have come out of China have a tendency not to be that good. But when you get a look at something like the Sigeli Z-Max, which it appears to have a different set of insides from... Uh, the, the Smock Tech Z-Max, that's actually very good and I'm enjoying that a lot. So I'm with you, Chris. I would love to see the day come when uh, when China starts turning out really good stuff and uh, you never know. You look, it might happen within 10 years. Now, I'll, here's a question. What odds will you give on that happening, Chris? <laughs> 100 to 1 against. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Use something and the washer falls out, and oh dear me! Yes, it's uh, <laughs> it does get a little bit that way, doesn't it? And and again, I've I've got to say, you know, when you you look at the quality of of as Dave was saying earlier, the foggy, uh, the Hellfire, the Cobra, all of which have been designed in the UK um, and largely built in the UK, you're looking at. at it's a masterpiece of design, isn't it? It's good quality stuff and it's good and solid and strong. And it's just a shame that they're, they're not there in the numbers. That's mm. the only Bringing thing. Bringing up your point about the Stratocaster, may I say I play guitar as badly on a Stratocaster as I do on a copy. <laughs> it sounds equally bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must admit there was a point in time when I thought having... The real I am would make me a better guitarist, but like you, I've discovered it's not the tools, it's the fool that's using the tools that makes it sound right when it comes to musical instruments. And uh, yeah, Aye. not brilliant at all of that by any way, uh, any, mean, any manner of means. I'm stumbling over my words now. Um, I don't know about the rest of you, but I've, I've quite enjoyed this meander, meander down memory lane tonight. And it's having the original team back together is, is just... It's kind of nice. It's kind of nice. And we've got good things coming. Um, but just to sum up the last two years, you've got 30 seconds each. Start with Andy Sutton, then to Kat, then to Dave, then to Sav, and then we're away. So, Andy, the last two years in e cigs for you. Sum them up in, in 30 seconds. Very difficult to do that in 30 seconds because it's really been a fantastic period of my life. Um, met some fantastic people. That's a big part of vaping as well. Um, been through a lot, uh, a lot of devices. Found what I like, and I love nicotine. So I'm going to keep using them. There you go, Chris. You? For me, I'm going to sum it up e-cig wise that the e-cig industry moves faster than any industry I've ever come across before, and. I hope that is the way it continues in the future and nothing stops that from happening. Here, here. Mr. Kitson, your turn. Look at that. It's oh, great. That sums it up, doesn't it? Doesn't it just? <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. It's a bit foggy in here. Um, uh, so it's a fun. Fun. There's my summary. It's been great. Fun. Indeed. Sav? Yeah, I have to say I've enjoyed every second. I've learnt so much stuff I didn't even want to learn, but I've met some amazing people and wouldn't change it for the world. It's been brilliant. And I'll echo everything that everybody said. The last two years for me has been an absolutely amazing journey. Um, I'm thrilled at the blue monkey nuts that we've got as many people sitting and tuning into the show tonight, and I'm over the moon that I've met the team that we're working with, um, all good people. 
and I've, I'm thoroughly enjoying doing what I'm doing. And I think that's as good a point as any to say good night to everybody. So from us all here at Vapor Trails TV, happy birthday to us, happy birthday and many of them to all of you. And from all of us, all together, good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Thanks for watching. <laughs>